Just a second, let me pause it first. All right, so we know what a string is, and uh, uh, we went through certain things that I just want to have a quick review on it. Uh, uh, we talked about, we talked about dynamic memory allocation, and we said dynamic memory allocation is essentially when you have, uh, this is not dynamic memory allocation, this is statically allocated memory, right? Which means the, no, the, the size is always the same, it is encoded within your executable, and uh, what you see is what you get. You have five integers, it's five, you're doomed to have five, it cannot be six, you cannot change it to four, it remains that way. And it's decided at compile time, where you can actually change that and make it run time, which means when your program is running, halfway through running, you can say, I won't have five integers, then those five integers come outside of your program your executable will not contain it. Therefore, through the runtime of your program, you can make this smaller, bigger, you can change, make any change to it as you wish, because now it's happening during the execution of the program. Are we okay with this? So that was the first thing. Then the next thing we talked about was, what usually goes wrong with uh, uh, dynamic memory allocation. We said the first one is initialized port pointer. When you create a pointer, you don't allocate memory, you access it. You're gonna get a segmentation fault. We said that if uh, always you gotta make sure uh, that uh, you have to allocate memory. If it's null you got, and you didn't, it's gonna give you a null pointer assignment. We told you you have to always stay in the range of your allocation if you go one more or many more, you always get segmentation fault and you're out of the range of your allocation. And we told you memory leak happens when you allocate memory and point to it with a pointer, then you use the same pointer to do another memory allocation without deleting the old one. Doing that causes memory leak. So therefore, you're gonna have a, 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 a piece of memory that is out there and nobody knows uh, what to do with it. You have to reboot your computer for it to get fixed. We said that the correct state of an unused pointer in dynamic memory allocation, when you don't know what's gonna happen to it next, is to always set it to null pointer. So later on you can detect that this pointer is unused, you don't need to do any, uh, to do any deletion, and it can be uh, pointing to a uh, allocated memory. And uh, you have to always keep track of the size of the memory you are allocating, and you have to make sure when you deallocate it, you deallocate it the way you allocated it. If it's an array, you delete it with, a, with an array notation. If it's a single entity, you delete it with a single entity notation. And also we mentioned that after you are done with all that, you gotta make sure you set it back to null if you don't know what happens to the pointer later, okay? If you cannot foresee it, you have to do it just in case. If by mistake you do not delete the way you deleted before, either you get a null point, you get a segmentation fault because you had a single entity and you deleted it with an array, or if it was an array and you deleted it without array notation, you only delete the first one and you're gonna have memory leak. So again, when reusing pointers, always make sure you take care of all the unfinished business you had with the, with the allocated memory and make sure that uh, uh, if you have to do something with that memory, do it and then free the memory and do dynamic memory allocation. <clears throat> so yeah, when you delete it after deletion, you can reuse the memory to whatever you want and always stay within the range of your memory management. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. So this part was what, like the memory, the dynamic memory allocation that we dealt with it before. We created the string, and the string we created, we created a fault constructor. Our string did not have any safe empty state. What is a safe empty state? In the other class, we had lots of problem with it. That's why I am going to explain it over here again. What 
what does it mean a safe empty state? What does it mean an empty object? Okay, an empty thing and a set em safe empty state. These are two different things. I mentioned, like this is the fifth time that I mentioned this example, but this kind of fits. Let's say um, this table's job, okay, is to hold coffee cups. Okay, I'm supposed to put coffee cups in here. Okay, do you see any coffee cups? No. This is a safe empty state. It's null pointer. It's set to null pointer. There is no coffee cup. It is supposed to be. You know this table is made to hold coffee cups. There is none. This is set to null pointer. If I put an empty coffee cup there is when there is nothing in it, this is empty. I have a coffee cup, but inside coffee cup there is no coffee. This is an empty state, not a safe empty state. A safe empty state is a recognizable state of class being invalid. When your class is unusable, your class is bad, a recognizable Bad situation is called the safe empty state. When you have a coffee cup but it's empty, it's not a bad scenario. Your object is that it, it is holding what it's supposed to hold. That thing that is holding is empty. Are we okay with this? That's what, are we okay? Are we okay? That's what my default constructor is doing, my no argument constructor is doing here. That's why my string has no safe empty state. Because all the states that I create my string in, it will be valid. The only case that it's going to be, it's a regular empty state, which is its default constructor, which means in here I'm actually mentioning um, allocate and copy an empty string. And allocate and copy, what it does, when it's an empty string, the length becomes zero. Length plus one becomes one. It becomes an array of one character with nothing in it. The first one set to zero. I created the constructor that received the C string and copied that set, uh, measured the size of the string, allocated enough memory, plus one for the null character, then copied it to it, and we were done. Then we found that if we pass the class by value, pass the object, string object by value from one scope to another, C++ compiler will automatically copy it. And that copying will cause this problem. So I have the two classes A and B over here, two things. Up and down, up is A, bottom is B. I didn't write B, but let's assume the second one is B. When the class is passed by value, that could be B is set to A, what happens is that the compiler, the C language, is not aware that the resources of class is kept outside of the scope of the class. It's dynamic memory allocation. Therefore, all it's going to copy is the content of A into B, correct? Content of A into B. And content of A going to B, what does it do? Going to B, it's going to copy anything that inserts M data pointer into M data pointer of B. Therefore, you're going to have this situation, which essentially A and B both point to the same memory. And you're going to have memory leak. And the problem is that when A goes out of scope, its destructor deletes its data. And when B goes out of scope, it wants to delete the data. There is nothing in there. Destructor crashes. This type of crash, 90% of the time, happens at the end of the program. When your program runs perfectly, but at the end of the program, when everything is over, it crashes, it means you have, a, you have such a problem. You're not copying this stuff properly, okay? Most likely. Are we okay with this? So that is bad copying. What was good copying? How did we do good copying? Good copying is done as follows. When we are doing good copying, we have A and B. When actually B gets set to A, 
what happens is that first we remove the stuff that A has, uh, B has, because I want to just overwrite B with A, correct? Because I want to overwrite B with A, I remove all the junk that B has in memory. I remove them all. After removing all those things, then it's not pointing to anything, correct? Because it's not pointing to anything, I can actually allocate memory to the exact size of A that I want to put this stuff in it. Now that everything is copied, then now that everything is, uh, uh, now that enough space is provided, one by one I'm gonna copy everything from the other one to here. So all this stuff are copied from A into B. That copying is done, then what happens? I'll update the size of B to the value that A has, and everything is done. I have two, uh, two objects that are exact copies of each other properly. Essentially, I tapped into the copy mechanism. I told to C++, I'm going to do the copy. You don't do it for me. And that was done with copy constructor. We'll bring it up. Now, when the destruct, when A goes, uh, when A is about to go out of the scope, your destructor kicks in, deletes the data for A, and then A will go out of scope and it's gone, no problem. And B, the same thing. When it wants to go out of scope, first the destructor kicks in, wipes out the memory, and B goes out of, out of scope, and we have no memory leak. Life is beautiful. Okay, that is good copying, and that's what we have done in the string in here essentially. In the string over here, what we are doing, first we are deleting the data of, sorry, it's not there. Uh, where is the, where is the? Oh, it's right here. Uh, it's in set, yeah, that's it. So first I am deleting, first I am deleting the data of the thing that I'm overriding you with. In here we are doing set, right? First I'm deleting that, then I allocate and copy the information, and I'm done, okay? In that one it was very much in, uh, in detail. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right, the next thing we need to know is to see how we can resize memory. I have it, I don't wanna wipe it out. I wanna resize it, I wanna make it bigger. If I want to do something like that, how do I do it? And we're going to do that in here. So how we want to do it, I want to have my screen to be able to concatenate another string to it. So I want to be able to have a code that says over here, for example, string A is set to uh, Freddy. And I'm going to say, I want to be able to say A.concat. Flintston. Was it Flintston? Is that correct spelling of it? And everybody knows. Anybody's over here 60 years old? No? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. E at the end, of course. And it's Fred. It's not Freddy? Okay, Fred. No. Anyway, so I want to do this. Who else? Oh, let, me, let me make it easy. Fred Sole. <laughs> okay. So we want to do this. I want to concatenate Soleil after Fred. I want to do that, okay? So I don't want to get rid of Fred. I don't want to delete it. I don't want to overwrite it. I want to add something to it. If I want to do something like this, how do I do that? Well, essentially, this is how it's done step by step. First, we have the data, and the data that we have, it has some values in it, right? Then what we need to do we don't want to get rid of that. We want to make it bigger to the size that we want. So I had Fred, that was F-R-E-D, and I had Soleil, that is S-O-L-E-I. So I have four and five. So if I want to put them together, I need nine spaces. I had one now, so it has to be 10 spaces, right, to be able to put these together. In here, I have seven. So if I want to make this thing 14, what do I need to do? I have to first, have a temporary pointer of the same type. So whatever M data is pointing, I'm gonna create a temporary pointer of the same type and allocate the size, the new size that I want, either bigger or smaller, I don't care. I wanna resize it. 
So I'll do it like that. Then, after doing this, I'm going to copy everything from the old one into the new one. I don't want to lose the data. I don't want to just delete it. I need that data. So I'm going to copy everything from the old one into the new one. And after that copying is done, now I can get rid of the old one because I just copied it, right? I get rid of the old one. And now that the old one is gone and, and done with, I'm going to update the size. It was 7. No, I'm going to make it 14. So the size is updated. I have the memory. And I have the pointer that is supposed to point that to, to that memory. Because it's not pointing it, it's pointing to some garbage place now, right? So now I can comfortably set that one to the place that temp is pointing to. So it's actually m data is equal to temp. So what happens, it gets the address that I have in temp and puts it right in m data. Therefore, temp and m data are pointing to the same place right now. OK? And then, ta-da, everything else will be gone. The function is over. The temp will be gone. The only thing that is remaining is m data and the thing that is pointing to I have a bigger memory. Of course, it's somewhere else in memory, but who cares? I want a bigger memory. I have it. So I'm going to do the exact same thing right now with concat, with the string. So, so what do I do? I'm going to say, First, let's actually write it. So concat, again, if I don't know what is returned, what I need to return, I always make it return this. That's what I do. So I'm going to say string reference concat, OK? And constant character C string. So that's what I want to do. I want to get a string, and I want to concatenate it to this one. So let's bring it over here in. In my new thing in here, there we go. And it's a member of string. Now what I'm going to do, do the exact same thing that I did over there. First, I have to see what is the length of the thing that I want, how big I want it to be. So I have the C string, so I can get its length. So I'll go strlen of C string. OK? I have the size of the current object. It is in m size, right? So I'm going to get that. Actually, m length, we called it. Length. So that's that. So this sum that you see, strlen plus m len, is the character size of the two strings being together. I need one more because I have a null at the end that I have to add, correct? So I'm going to add one more, plus 1. And that becomes the size that I want to actually do the, copy, the uh, allocation. So I'm going to say uh, character pointer temp is set to new character to this size. So memory allocation is done. All I need to do is to do a copy. So first, I'm going to copy the data of this object in here. I want to concatenate, right? Fred has to get copied in here. So I'm going to say str copy from m data. Oh, sorry, from uh, into temp from m data. So my temp has Fred at the beginning now. The command in C string that concatenates is called str cat, right? So what the next thing I need to do is do str cat into temp, now the C string. So I have the temp. It was set exactly the size that I wanted. I copied the name from this one. I concatenated the other one over here. Everything is in temp. I do not need the M data anymore. The M data is not needed. So I'm going to say delete M data. M data is deleted. Now I have to update the size. The size was four. Now it's nine, right? So I have to say M <coughs> size plus equal str len or M length, sorry. M length plus equal str len of C string. 
Now the length of the object is updated. All I need to do is say, hey, M data, point to where temp is pointing. And done. Return this. OK? So now if I actually do a display, and because I'm returning this, I can simply say display new line. I don't need to go to a new line and put another, because I know display is a member of that one, right? And L, so I not only concatenate, but immediately display. I return this. I can do that. Now if I run the program, three years later, four years later, five years later, I'm going to have Fred Soleil in here. We OK? All right. Well, wait a minute. Uh, um, I want to have a space between the two, right? I want, to have it be, I want it to be space. So I can do dot concat, concat, uh, space, and then dot concat, sole. Now you know why this is good. Yeah. OK. So I don't have to keep, like, I can actually say a dot concat dot concat, and I keep going like that. So it works perfectly for me. So I can actually do something like this. And I'm going to have Fred space Sully. Are we OK with this? Any questions down to here? That's resizing the memory. How do we do it? First, we allocate the new size that we want, whatever it is. Then we copy all the information from old to new, update the size, get rid of the old one, make the old one to point to the new one, and we're done. OK? And if you don't remember it, go review the slide. The slide is very descriptive, tells you exactly how it works. And it's already in the notes, so you can see it over there. All right? Yes? You have to be loud. That was your loud? <laughs> <laughs> la, la, la. You use your opera voice. One more time. I guess from reading your lips is that you said string CPP. You want to see that? OK. Sorry, I'm getting gold. I'm losing my hearing. So you have to be very loud. All right? So again, <clears throat> one more time. How do we resize? We find a new size, whatever it wants to do, have a temporary pointer, allocate the memory in there, copy the old data into the new place, Delete and get rid of the old one. Update the size. Make the old one to point to the newly allocated memory. And this temp is a local variable. When concat is done, temp is gone. OK? You know what is the common mistake? I'm going to mention it, and you're going to do it again anyway. You know what is the common mistake? And I have no idea why students do that. They write this beautiful code. And you know what they do? I have no idea why. Why, why, why? They think any pointer is dynamic memory. We have to delete it. No. OK? Please, because I have seen, I, 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 I know that I'm going to see this. I'm telling you beforehand, before you come to me and I tell you why you deleted it, I'm telling you, don't. Don't wipe out your final product. OK? That's, what's that, what, that's what it was. Don't do that. All right? Are we OK? <laughs> Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Are we OK three? Oh, yes. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't you put it over there and say don't do it? Well, go ahead, keep going. It's not that the program's not going to run. It's like it's like you create the place, mm -hmm. you copy everything, mm -hmm. you make it look nice, look nice, everything is perfect, then you throw it in garbage. That's like that's it's so, exactly what it is. So it's as if I as I tell you, like um, can I have both contents of this thing in that backpack? You take this off, put it both in a backpack, and throw the backpack away. You don't do that. You don't throw away your final product. So if you do start with that plugging. Do 
just throwing the way hands down his sleeve. Yeah, that's my answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, you just because you like to know what happens, this is what's going to happen. It just hung with some code, exit code as this. And the funny thing is it didn't show anything. It just tried to. Pardon me? Yeah. Oh, I did it at temp? Oh, even that, even that. Temp, they're the same, right? Temp and that are pointing to the same place. So I, it doesn't matter, temp. Temp and that are potatoes, potatoes. It's, it's the same thing. It's going to be exactly the same, OK? So it crashed. And I do it two more times, then I have to reboot my computer. I don't want to do that, OK? So let's save this. Are we OK? Are we OK, one? Are we OK? Yes. So let's say if it's Fred Soleil, Fred was four and Soleil was five. So M length already, M length already held four in it. Yeah. And Soleil was five, so I added five to it and it became nine. But C string isn't the size of the of both of them? No. C string is the one that I'm adding to. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I see. C string is the one that is being added. Oh okay. Okay. Alright, so that's that. Now are we good down to here? One more question. Yes. So, <laughs> it's just for syntax purposes. Well, go, go, go. That to update the memory, is this kind of like a proportion? Update the size. Update the size. Update the size. Yeah. Update the size. yeah. So that's a syntax word? That's not the syntax, that's the logic. No, yeah, right. That's what I mean. Well, I have the length that was four, now I have five. How, how do I make that four or five? I add. All right. Okay. So that's that. So now, attention, Achtung, attention. Okay. Uh, I can actually add another thing too. So let's say I have A as Fred and I have uh, string B. Uh, I can, uh, yeah, so um, I can set B to Soleil, and I want to be able to do this, so I have done that, that's fine, I'm just going to comment, like, um, actually, let's do something else, give me a second, give me a second. Okay, let's save this, zero, one. Okay, so if I want to concatenate another string at the back of the other string, so I can say string uh, B, uh, and I'm going to set, so I'm going to say B uh, dot set, and in here I'm going to say Soleil, Sigta Soleil, and then I'm going to say A dot concat B dot display, if I want to do that. So now I want to actually pass another string to, it, to concatenation. How do I do that? It's the same thing, people. It doesn't make any difference. So um, I can simply say string reference concat. And in here, I'm going to say constant string Reference S. So I'll go my, back to my string thingy. Where is it? In here. All right. 
and make this member of a member of string string. Now in here I'm going to say return. Okay. Now I already wrote the concatenation for uh, C string, right? So all I need to do is to write uh, return um, concat s dot c string. I have written a function that returned the c string, right? So I'm just reusing my code. So it's doing the same thing, and it's going to work perfectly because I already wrote the one that works with the c string. So if I return c, c, s as c string, it's going to work exactly the same way. No difference. So now if I run this program, it's going to work exactly the same way. So for the first one, it's going to just say Fred Soleil with no space. Uh, now if I, can, if I want to actually put a space, I can do it. I can actually go, uh, I can actually go uh, uh, concat uh, space and concat B. So first one does the space and second one does the, and second one does the, uh, the object. Are we okay? Are we okay with this? All right, I'm going to do some renaming. All right, let's save this. Um, so that's zero, 02, resizing. And how do I save these? So, so I'm going to Alt F A, save this one as uh, string. DMA.cpp and save this one as string DMA dot H and make the header file over here to be string DMA. String DMA and this one's gonna be string DMA. Too. Reason I did that is just I, I just want to switch to something else, and I want you to have the previous version. So these are all gone. Let's bring back everything up. Okay. So my string, my string header file, and my program.cpp, they're all here. I'm going to rename this set. I am going to rename the set, okay? It's something bad. Just rename it. I'm not changing any code. I am just renaming the set. Where is the source code for set? The source code for set one is over here. So instead of set, I'm going to call it operator equal. And I'm going to come over here and do the exact same thing to set over here. So I have a set over here. This is the one, right? I'm gonna control V it, set, and I'm gonna come over here, set. I just changed the name. When I run this program, it works exactly the same way. What a big surprise. I just renamed set to operator equal. Do you see any difference in anything? There is one difference there. When you call a function operator and then you put the operator over there, you can call it in two different ways. You can call it using the function name, as I did right now. So if I just renamed operator equal to operator equal, set to operator equal, right? Or I can call it using its operator syntax which means done. Do you understand this? What? Which part do you understand? I'm just telling you it's a, a statement that I'm making. That line number 10 and 9 are equal. They are the same. Okay? 
when the C++ language <coughs> doesn't recognize an operation, it tries to see if the function equivalent for it exists. I just told you, what is a function equivalent of an operator? Simple as that. So if you have at left side B that is a string, right? And you have at right side a constant character string, correct? There is no such thing. We don't have any operation like that. And we know that line number seven, assignment at the moment of creation is what? Assignment at the moment of creation is? Constructor. What type of constructor? What type of constructor? What type of constructor? They don't allow you to keep your students in the classroom anymore. Okay, so, no, it's one argument. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to one argument constructor. We talked about it. Well, we forgot. So essentially, line number seven is this. Line number seven is not assignment operator. We talked about it before. We said that at any time, what did I do? Control Z. We mentioned that at any time you have assignment at the moment of creation, it essentially means one argument constructor. It doesn't mean assignment. That's why the C compiler doesn't bother even looking at it. So this is what I actually did. I created A, Fred, and then I created B, okay? Then at line 11, I'm saying B is set to select. C++, when you have a assignment operator, wants left and right to be the same thing, correct? There is no such a thing. It can't do it. Because of that fact, what it's going to do it's going to try and see if the function operator for it exists. What is the function operator for it? Operator equal. I just created, it was set two seconds ago, and you have no problem with it. As soon as I renamed it to operator equal, and we go, what? Nothing. I just renamed it. Okay? So if you see, and I'm telling you, this is something that you need to know. So, essentially, if I had if I had, if I had A plus B, what does the compiler look for? B dot operator plus B. Oh, A, sorry, A dot operator plus B. A dot operator plus B. If I have A plus equal C, what compiler looks for is a dot operator plus equal c, which means if you create a function by this name, it will be called if compiler sees this. Okay? Now, if I run this program, the constructor, I know what it's called. And as soon as it gets to here, it jumps where? To operator equal. The argument that you see over here will be the argument that the operator is passed to. So str will be soleil. Then all the things that we have done will happen. And it runs the exact same way, no difference. So it's gonna actually say Fred soleil. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called operator overloading. Operator overloading essentially means giving a new meaning to already existing operators in C language. Any operator that you have, you can give it new meaning. The only thing that you need to understand what kind of a prototype an operator is translated into when it's being called. So all the knowledge that you need to know when C++ sees A plus B. If A plus B is not already defined in language definition, if A is not an integer, B a double. If it's an employee and a double, then it's not defined anymore. 
then you have to see what type of operators C will look for. Are you okay with this? Now, first of all, to show you what that, what that was, I'm going to go back to the container thingy that we had. Something simpler that doesn't have dynamic memory allocation. So this is the container example that we had. Container.h, container.cpp. If I want, so in here I'm going to say 0, 3, So if I actually want to deal with the container now, just to give you an example on how the container is going to work with this thing. If I have container, and you remember what the container was. It's a value and a capacity. You keep the value and capacity in a thing. So it just holds two integers. That's all. OK? You remember what it was. And hopefully, now you understand why I asked you to study before you come to class. But you need to review the code that we have done, right? So that's the container we have done in class. So what happens is here, if I say con uh, container, let's say, uh, A, and I put over there uh, 20 in it, if I say, for example, I want to add some stuff, like I want to add 10 more things to A, how do I do it? I'm going to say A plus equal 10. Can I do that? No, because left is container, right is an integer. So what will the compiler look for? Compiler will look for a dot operator plus equal int. If I have that, it will call it. So I'll create it. So what I will do, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say uh, da 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 uh, container reference, because I don't know what I'm going to return, uh, operator plus equal int value. OK? So I want to add something to the value that container already has, right? So I'm going to say set the value to m value plus value, right? So it essentially adds to it. Whatever the value is, it's going to be plus that. We are okay with that, right? Are we okay with that? Okay. And set doesn't return anything. I was a bad boy. I set it to void. I was a very bad boy. But anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say return this. I'll do it myself over here. Return this. Okay. Now, if I look at it, I don't get any error with it anymore. It's 10 plus equal. A plus equal 10. Now, if I actually, let me just put a display. So I'm going to say A dot display. If I actually run the program, oh, I put it in dot H. Actually, bad boy, yeah. Give me a second, let me fix that. So copy. Container.cpp. And this is OK. So one more time. So when I run this, and let's put this one over here too. When I run this, the constructor is called. I know that. It comes over here, sets the value. Then it comes a plus equal 10. At left side, I have container. At right side, I have an integer. Such a thing doesn't exist. Because it doesn't exist, it checks the member arguments of a. Hey, a, hey, do you have a plus equal operator that I can call? Yes, I do. Does it accept an integer? Yes, it does. So it simply goes to that one, the value becomes 10, so essentially it sets the value to 20 plus 10, which is 30, and then returns this, and then displays it, which means it's 3, 300, 30 out of 1,000, whatever the container is. Are we okay with this? I have set. So in here, I have a set thingy. 
that sets it, sets it to a single value of integer, correct? I can change that to an assignment operator too. I can say A20, I don't want it to be 20. I want A to be 123. I want that equal operator to work for me. How do I do it? I write it. I'm going to come over here and say I want container reference container operator equal int value. And I simply call the set in it. Done. And of course, I'm going to add this one to Oh, that's muscle memory. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, so operator equals. So in here is going to be container <coughs> reference operator equal int value. All right. So now if I run this, First, it will set it to 20, but we don't care. Afterwards, it's going to come to assignment operator and sets it to 123. Return this and comes back over here, A plus equal 10. Adds 10 to it, displays it, and we're going to have 133 over there. Are we okay with this? Yes. As, as long as the sig signatures are different, you're fine. For example, let's say I want, I want to set a container to another container. So it's going to need another operator equal, correct? correct? So if I want to do that, what do I do? I'm going to write container, reference, container, operator, equal. And in here, I'm going to say constant container reference C. So I want, to, I want to set it to that one. Because the signatures are absolutely different, it's not, it's not going to make any difference. So in here, I can actually say, uh, no, I can say set uh, C dot M value. And uh, M dot, because it's a container, I have to do them both, right? And M underline capacity is set to C dot capacity. I want to have a proper copy, right? And I have to do that before set. Actually, I have a function for that. Yeah, I have a function for that. Uh, C dot M capacity. I forgot. Thank you. <laughs> Reuse your code. Yeah. And then put this one in the header file. And there is no violation as long as, again, people, students always ask, uh, will, it, will it get confused? If you get confused, compiler will too. That's the rule, OK? If you cannot decide which one is called, then compiler doesn't know it, know it either. Very simple and straightforward. Now I can actually set it to, so I can have a container B. And I can say B is set to A and B dot display. But of course, you would appreciate it. You, you know the fact that I did not need to overload the assignment operator here because all the information of container is within its scope. Having this just, just was a waste of time. B equal to A, compiler can take care of it. System can take care of it. The left and right are the same. It's going to do a blind copy from left to right, from right to left, and everything's beautiful. Yes? So um, for uh, the operator equal for int value. Give me um, line number. The 16. Line number 16 in continue.h? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So in here, uh, container A, uh, 20 
is overridden by this. Yeah, so it, the 20 value is actually being overridden uh, by 123. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Through the deleting of dynamic memory. No, no, there's no dynamic memory here. Container, this is just pure operator overload. I gave a simple thing so you forget about dynamic memory and throw it all the garbage. We just want to focus on how to do dynamic memory out of, uh, uh, operator overloading in here. That's it. There is no dynamic memory. Just how to overload operator. Uh, A set to one, two, three, even that we didn't need to set it up. I did not need to overload the assignment operator for an integer. Why didn't I need to do that? Because when compiler looks at left side and it sees there's a container, at right side it sees there's an integer. It sees it cannot put an integer into a container. What it's going to do first is going to look to see if there is an operator overload. In this case, it is. If it cannot find that one, it tries to see if there is any way that it can change uh, an integer into a container. And we have a constructor that accepts an integer in a container. So what's going to happen is that it's going to actually convert that 123 into a container temporarily, temporary nameless container, and copy it and be done with it. Problem was that doing that, then it will set the capacity to 1,000 feet, which was a bad thing. You want to just set the value. So uh, we didn't want that to happen. So if you have something like this, if you write something like this, then that wouldn't work. So again, it all depends on the logic. But the syntax is this. Whenever you want to have an operator to work with a class, you can define it. Simply, you can overload it. And please follow the understanding of what is the meaning of overload. Overloaded mean, overload means the operator must exist. I cannot overload an at sign operator because at sign is not an, is an, is not an uh, operator. I cannot overload number sign as an operator. Why? Because it's not an operator. Overload means to change the meaning of already existing thing. I cannot uh, add a new operator to the C language library. It doesn't work that way. Okay? The operator must exist so you can change it. Are we okay? Are we okay? This is binary operators. Now, I'm going to tell you all different ways that you can recognize what an operator can translate into. But when you see an operator, what are the possibilities? C++ goes through all different levels of uh, checking. When something doesn't exist, one by one it tries to check. Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? If there is none, then it gives you an error. OK? So another. This is binary operator. What is a binary operator? When I say binary, I don't mean zeros and ones. A binary operator is an operator that has two operands. Everybody knows what an operand is, of course. Operand is the argument of an operand. So if I say A plus B, A and B are operands of plus that is an operator. Are we OK with this? All right? So, so far we have done, uh, so far we have done, uh, uh, binary operators, okay? So, so far we have done binary operators. If I want to do a unary operator, what do I do? Um, what is a good example for it? For example, I want to see if a container, I want to see if it's a container in a safe, empty state or not, okay? I think a good thing for it is to use the not operator for it. So if I say, So I'm going to say over here, b plus equal 2,000. That should put it in a safe, empty state, correct? Right? So if I say b dot display now, if I run this, uh, if we have written the code properly, probably it's got build errors. What is a build error? Oh, I forgot to return this in here.
So if I run it, you will see that it says invalid container objects. You see that? That's the message it's going to give you. Because I put 2,000 and I had 200 as capacity, you cannot put 200 units in something that has 200 spaces, right? Now I want to detect that. So if I wanted to detect that, I have to say if B dot is in safe empty state, correct? But I want to have an operator. I want to do this. If not B, then C out too many things to be too many things to put in B. Okay? I'm going to say otherwise display. Else display. A unary operator works exactly like a binary operator, but the difference is that B becomes the owner of the operator. There is no argument anymore. B belongs to I. So all I need to do is to go to the header file of container and create the operator. So I can simply say over here, bool, because it's returning a boolean, right? Operator, not, and don't pass anything to it. That's it. And of course, I'm going to make it a constant because it's not going to change anything. So essentially, when you see the error is gone now, because it looks, OK, not B, that doesn't make sense. Do I have an operator overloaded for it? Yes. So it's going to call that one. So how do I actually do it? So I'm going to come here in container. And in here, I'm going to say bool container operator not const. And in here, I'm going to say return is in safe empty state. That's it. So essentially, when this not operator is called, it's going to call this one operator not, and that calls in is in safe empty state. So if I run this program now, now not B has a meaning. So it's got to say too many things to put in B. Just, I want you to appreciate how powerful the language is. You can literally create operators for whatever you want. You can go bananas. You can do crazy stuff, but don't do it. Like, for example, you see this B is equal to A, okay? I could have done this. I could have, I could have done, I could have done a stupid thing like this. And come over here. Do the same thing over here, plus. That's a binary operator, right? And in here, I could do this. It will work perfectly. If I run this, it's going to act exactly the same with absolutely no difference. There you go. But should I do it? Of course not. If you have a plus operator, make it work like plus. You are writing the code for it. You can be crazy and do crazy stuff. But let's not do it. If we are doing plus, let, let mean plus. OK? So you can overload anything you want, but please do it properly. All right? So I'm going to put it back to what it was before. And this one, too. And this one, too. See, I see that people actually need a break. And we're going to go for a break. Please remind me to. So now if I go back to my string, I can actually make it look nice. Instead of concat, I can do operator plus equal, right? Operator. Or maybe it would be better to have them both. in case somebody wants to use function concat instead. You can simply go over here, operator plus equal, operator 
plus equal, and then come to the CPP file, and have them right over here. So string reference string operator plus equal constant character pointer C string. All you need to do is to return concat of C string. And you can do the exact same thing with this one. I'm a lazy man, so I'm just going to copy it like that. There you go. So there you go. That's it. That's operator plus equal with constant string reference. And why is it giving me an error? Because I say operator tro. Okay, operator. That's better. Plus equal. So now in your string, when you are actually adding a string, for strings you can have plus equal. So I can say over here string S A B C. Now I can say S. Now I can say S plus equal D e, F. It concatenates. Because I essentially call that function, right? Doesn't make any difference. So you can make everything work nicely and good looking <laughs> instead of using ugly functions. Okay, you can do all these things. You have the power to create any operator that you want. Now, another operator that is a little bit tricksy is uh, another uh, unary operator. This unary operator is plus plus and minus minus. These, there are only two of them plus plus, minus minus. They are a little freaky. Why? Let's say for container, I want to add one to the container. I want to have a plus plus for it. How can I do it? So first of all, so essentially, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do B, uh, sorry, uh, plus plus B. It was, tw it was uh, what? It was 133. Now it becomes 134. So it adds one to it. I want to add one to it using plus plus. How do I do it? You come to the container and you use the same thing. So with not, you did operator not. With this, you do operator plus plus. No difference. So you simply say exactly the same way like this, operator not. But uh, in here, I'm going to return the container itself. So container reference operator plus plus. And I'm going to put nothing in here. OK? And go to the C++ section of it. And I'm going to say container reference container operator plus plus. And all I need to do is to do to say uh, operator plus equal one, right? Correct? Operator plus equal adds one to the va adds whatever to the value, right? I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I just reuse my code. I'm going to say return operator plus equal one. So it adds one to it. OK? It, so this has no problem. The tricky thing is that what if I want plus plus to come after? Because we have two different ones, right? Plus plus before and plus plus. Prefix and postfix. How do I overload the postfix one? If I actually want, so I'm going to say b.display. Now I'm going to do b++. And I want to do another b.display over here. How can I deal with that? How can I set that up? This is how it is. And this is only for plus, plus, and minus, minus. No other operator can work like this, because no other operator can come postfix if it's unary. Unary, oper unary operators always come before, correct? So to bring it postfix, I have to have some unusual type of thing done. That's why 
I have to have the exact same thing, but I have to somehow make this to be different with the other one. How can I do that? There is absolutely no way. No matter how I tried to fix it, it didn't work. So they said, the heck with it. I'm gonna do, we're gonna do something completely cuckoo about this. How is it? You add one int in here. That int means nothing. It only means this one is postfix. That's all. Because they had to somehow differentiate between the two, right? You just add an int. Why? Because the sky's high. There's no reason for it. But that's how it is. If you write operator plus plus int or operator minus minus int, it means it comes after. It works the exact same way, but it comes after. So essentially, if I, if I did this over here, now it would come after. There is one catch for this. Oh, you are still five-year-old kids. I'm going to separate you the next day. You've got to come sit over here. She's going to sit back there. All right. Now, you're too late. We were talking with them. I can see that. Anyway, so. <laughs> Shush. All right. So the funny thing is that there is always someone in class. There are four people in the other class, actually, who do it. In here, it's only two. But it's OK. So take a look at the code difference between operator plus plus and operator plus plus int. Is there any difference? They are identical, right? And that's why they work identical too. Plus plus postfix and printfix don't work the same way they work for plus plus with an integer. With an integer, if it's postfix, it's going to happen after the statement, correct? If you say a is equal to b plus plus, first it's going to set b to a, if a to b, then it's going to add 1 to b, correct? Nothing like that over here. If you want that to happen, you have to fake it. You have to fake it. There is no other way. How do I fake it? Like this. So what I'm going to do, I want to somehow make this thing look like as if first it returns, then it adds, right? So what I'm going to do over here is this. I'm going to create an instance of container. I'm going to say container. Uh, before plus plus and I'm going to set it to this. What's going to happen? It's going to make a copy of the container before doing plus plus, correct? Then I'm going to say don't return a reference anymore. Why? Because if I return a reference of that, you cannot return a, the name of a dying thing out. If something is dying, you cannot return their name because it's dying. So instead of that, I'm going to just call the operator plus and return before plus plus. So what happens is that it's going to make a copy of what it had before. Then it's going to add to the current and return the old one out. So I kind of fake it. So again, plus plus, if it's postfix, you cannot automatically make it postfix. You have to fake it. And that's how it works. OK? So these are all about unary operators. We can overlook any unary operators that exist. There is no problem with that. And that's how it is. Binary operators work in a different way. So if I, let's say, I have two containers and I want to have, and I want to have the two containers to be added to each other as one. So I have container A and container B, and I want to put them together. Okay? If I want to do this and make a bigger container with them, if I want to do that, then how do I do it? What I mean is this. Let me first uh, run this, make sure it runs and compiles properly. Okay? There you go. So that's working. As you see, everything's working properly. Now, uh, so 0, 4, uh, 
I'm just going to clean it up and just show you one thing. So say I want to do something like this. 10 and 100. OK. So I want to be able to do this, container C. I want to be able to say C is equal to A plus B. Of course, it's going to tell me it doesn't exist because it doesn't exist, right? But there is a difference now between the two. A equals to C is equal to B plus C. So I want to have 30 units in a container that has 300 spaces. I want to be able to add two containers and make a bigger one out of it. I want to do that. How do I do something like this? For this, you have two ways of doing it, OK? Member operators or non-member operators? First, I always like it to be members. So do it the same way that so if nobody tells you how, do it the way the same way you know. So what happens is this. I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to say A plus B. So essentially, what I want to create would be this. I want to create C is equal to A dot operator plus B. I want this to be called. Correct? That's what we said we're going to do. There is one important difference here. When you have plus equal, plus equal operators have an important effect, have an important feature. It had a side effect. What does it mean? It changed the left operand, correct? When you say A plus equal B, A changes, correct? In here, your A should not change. It has to remain the same. If you are saying A is equal to B plus C, B and C remain the same after, correct? Right? Of course, I can make it in a way that it changes it, but I can't. I shouldn't. I have to make it work this, the way it is supposed to work, which means it should not change the owner. I know how to enforce that. So let's enforce it. How do we enforce it? First, let's create the operator. So I want the container. So, the, so first of all, it returns a co container. I'm not going to put reference. I'll tell you why. It cannot return a reference. Operator plus. At right side, it receives a container that it should not change. So that's a constant container reference right operand. Correct? So this is the right operand that is not supposed to change. How can I make sure that this operator won't change the, the, the owner? Have constant after. Have, have, have constant after. So that guarantees that. So I'm going to say const. So now let's create it. So I want to actually create this. I'll come to the container. So this is a member of container. All right. Now I want to add up what I have in right operand. To me, and I am the left operand, right? I am the left one. This, the owner, is the left operand. So what I will do to make sure that it works properly, I'm going to make a copy of myself because I cannot change myself. It's a constant, right? So I'm going to say container. Uh, return value is equal to this. Now, return value is a copy of this, a copy of left container, correct? Now, I can add the right operand to this one. I've already done that, right? So now, return that. Oh, I haven't done it, actually. I have to do it. So I'm going to say return value dot set. It's going to set to m value plus right operands. Let's, let me just shorten that thing. It's too big. 
I'm going to call it RO right operand. So it's going to make B right operands M value. M value. And the capacity is going to be M capacity. plus uh, right operands dot m capacity. So I did something redundant in here that I don't need to do, which means I'm just going to remove this. Instead of doing that, I'm just going to create it on the fly with a constructor. What idiotic thing I did. It was really stupid of me. So I have a constructor that accepts two things, right? So essentially, I what? I went down by mistake. Where was I? There you go. Okay, so I'm going to create that and return it. Right? So now what happens? Left, that is A, will be copied. Will be will help creating return value. That is the sum of M value of A and the right uh, operator's M value and capacity of A with capacity of right operand, and then it gets returned. As simple as that. And because it's a temporary variable that I create over here, nothing has changed. There is no problem with it. Okay? Of course, the proper way of doing it, like if you do this, it's good, but again, it shows that you're a rookie, okay? If you want to do it properly, the correct way of doing it is this. So I'm going to comment this. I know that if I try to call a constructor, it doesn't call it. Remember that? It creates a temporary nameless object. Remember what I told you? So I can say container. And that, that's it. So I'm saying return container that. So what is it going to do? It's going to create a temporary nameless object with the values that I have and return everything else. And that's going to overwrite C. Therefore, C is going to have the values I wanted. So it's going to be C dot display. And when I run it, it's going to show 30 out of 300. And that's the sum of the two containers. So that's another one. This is when you do it as a, this is when you do it as a member function. Now, we're going to do one more thing. This is an operator overload that is not a member of anything. You can do it that way. Okay, so what I will do I'm gonna how do I mm, so I'm gonna save these as container and I'm gonna say member binary Member binary CPP, yeah, that's a good name. Save. And I'm going to save the container over here as the same thing. So this is the example for member binary. And that's container.h. Save. And I'm going to change the header file over here to member binary too. Save. And this one too, program. And this is going to be as member binary too. And I'm going to make the container member binary. Save everything. Now I'm going to actually create this 
with a, uh, an operator over overload that is not a member of any, any uh, class. Therefore, it becomes a standalone function, okay? So what I will do over here is this. I'm gonna go to the header file in which I want to have the plus, equal, the plus operator created. I have to remove this because it's gonna have a conflict. If I have two uh, operators that uh, work exactly the same, then it's not going to work. So, now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come under the header file, create a separate single standalone function. And in that function, I'm gonna say this function is returning a container, okay? It's an operator and it's plus. Then it receives a con constant container reference left operand and constant container reference right operand. It's a completely standalone thing. So this is another thing that the compiler looks for. If it's not a member, compiler looks at any operator overload with the same name that is not a member two. So operators could be non-member two. So instead of doing that, I'm creating a standalone function like this and do it the same way. So I'm gonna go to container over here, right underneath to show, to, to make sure it's not a member. And I'm gonna say return container. Now, how do I access the values inside operands? They are private properties, right? Right? I cannot access them. If I actually say over here, and let me just uh, name these uh, easier ways. So I'm going to call it left operand, and I'm going to call this one right operand. So in here, I want to create a container. I want to say right operand dot uh, m value. I can't. There is no access. It's a private property. Do I have any accessors that give me the value? Do I have anything that tells me what is the value? No, I don't have anything that returns the value. Do I have anything that returns the capacity? No, there is none. So I have two choices. Either create queries that return those values. So create a query called value that returns the value, and create a query called capacity that returns the capacity, and use that. Or I can bring this function prototype inside and say, Hey, Mr. Compiler, this function, although it's not a member function, but it's a friend of mine. A friend function is a function that is not a member of the function, is not a member of a class, but it has access to all of its components, private or public or whatever. So right operand, now as you see, I have access. M value plus left operand dot M value and right operand dot M capacity and plus left operand dot M capacity. And it will work perfectly. So what are friends good for? Nice in a batch. Seriously, if you have such a thing in your code, it means you suck at object-oriented design. You just wrote a non-member function and gave access to everything on your class to it with absolutely no control. The other one, we made it a constant. Make sure it doesn't change the thing. We made the other one constant. Make sure it doesn't change that one. We went through all that thing not to be able to shoot ourselves in the foot. Now we created a outsider and we get to keep our house. Here, it's here my house. 
As soon as something is lost to your house, the person who had the key is a thief, right? You do that, right? You give the key to your brother, and then something is lost. You, say, you picked it, I know. You make your brother a thief because you were not wise enough not to key the key, give the key of your house to someone else. Never, ever use friends, ever. Always create accessories. So actually go over there, create a, a query. Actually come in here, so we have only two minutes, I don't have time to, uh, to write it down, uh, but what you do in here is this. Come to the class and create a query, call it int value const, make sure it doesn't change anything, then go to your CPP file, create that m value, create the uh, function for it, int container, value, const, and return m value. And instead of writing this garbage thing over here, call the access, so write operand dot value, and left operand dot value. Then you don't need to make it a friend anymore. And because you created safe accessors that are constant functions, it actually accesses the thing properly. Remember, never, ever use friends, ever. Why are we teaching you? Uh, yeah, so why does this put, like, the creator of C++ like, why is it being created? Uh, because it's a powerful language, isn't it? You don't do it. If you write a friend, friend, I'll tell you what friends are for, actually. Friends are to make it, the proper use of a friend is to give one, make one class friend of another class. How many of you guys have dogs? Anybody have a dog at home? You have a dog, right? Love you love your Tomorrow you can take it to wet, put it in the sleep, right? You can take it tomorrow, <laughs> correct? Your dog is your friend, but you are really its owner. It's not your good friend, give me a break. Yeah, I mean, sure, I know, but you, can you kill yourself? No, but you can kill your you pet. Can kill your son if you want to. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of after we are recording this. No. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that, you only have this friendship in classes if you have ownership involved. Say you want to create a class that represents an array. Then you're going to create another class that represents elements. Therefore, an array becomes a collection of elements. Therefore, an array is owner of an element. You cannot create an element by its own. It doesn't make sense. Have you seen an element of an array somewhere without an array? It's impossible. So the proper way of creating this is to create a class called element that is fully private. Even the constructors and destructors of the class, they are private, which means nobody can create it. Nobody can instantiate it. Then you go to your class uh, array, you make class array a friend of element. Because it has access to all its properties, it becomes its owner. You can instantiate an array only in an element. And therefore, friendship. But it's actually ownership. It's not friendship. My job All right? All right. All right, so that's it. We are done for today. I'm going to update these things. I'm going to update these codes and put the proper one up with friendship and accessors. And then we'll continue the next day. When is your midterm? Your midterm is going to be either. OK, let, let me just stop recording.